Hello everyone and welcome to the My Decorative Quilter Block of the Month. This is Block 10 of 12. It's an embroidery block and it was designed for you by Rita Gazard and presented by myself. I'm Mark Garretts. I'm a National Floriani Educator. As I always like to do before we get into the software and the construction details of this block, I'd like to show you a picture of what the finished block is going to look like. You'll recognize the outside and the base fabric as the block we've been working on all along. What we're going to be doing in this block is we're going to be creating and modifying that pa embroidery pattern that's in the center. So let's go ahead and get started with the software section of this month's block. If you haven't done it already, come all the way up to the top here and click the new page icon to get a new blank screen. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to open up the block that we've been working on. And what you want to do is come up here and click the open icon and you want to navigate to your November 2015 folder where we have stored this basic block for BOM or block of the month and you want to make sure you open the WAF version of it. Now if you stored it somewhere else you need to find it but if you followed our directions we had you stored in the November 2015 folder. And so go ahead and click that and click open to bring it in and that's going to bring in the basic block that we've been working on. Next thing we need to do is we need to set up our work area. So what you want to do is come up to the top ruler bar anywhere along it and right click on it. And for this lesson if I tell you to just simply click that means a left click. If I tell you to right click then I specifically mean a right click. You want to make sure that inches is checked and you want everything else here to be unchecked. Okay, so go ahead and click inches to lock that in. And you also want to make sure that your grid is off. If it's on, you want to click this icon right over here, your grid toggle. So if it's on like this, you want to click it again to turn it off because we don't want it to get in the way while we work on this particular block. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to load in our decor and we're going to start to do some modifications to it. So your decors are located right here under the decor icon. You want to go ahead and click that to open up the decor dialog. You want to find this one right here FQD DDE004 and go ahead and click that to bring it in. And we are going to come over to our sequence view and in our sequence view we want to click on the first decor item which is this one right here, right underneath this blue square. We want to hold down the control key and click on the second decor item and then we're going to delete them and to do that you want to come up here to the scissors icon or the cut icon and click it to delete them. So the next thing we want to do is we want to come over to our sequence view down here and if it hasn't happened already for you, you want to go ahead and expand this walnut taffy item right here, the first part of our decor. And you can see if I scroll down that this one is expanded for me already. But if yours looks like this, where this little plus icon is showing instead of the whole list of items, you want to go ahead and click that to where it turns into a minus, and that is expanding the whole thing. What we want to do next is we want to give ourselves a little bit more room to work with here. So we are going to come over to our properties box and we are going to actually get rid of it temporarily. And the way we're going to do that is click this little tiny X right here up in the corner of the properties box. So when we click that, our sequence view expands so we have a little more room to work with here. So what we're going to do is we're going to scroll all the way down to the bottom and you want to click on this last item which is a run stitch. Then you want to come up one, you want to start at the bottom, start with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten items, which is this other run stitch here, this loopy run. You want to hold down the shift key and click, and that's going to select all ten items, and we are going to get rid of those by coming up and clicking our cut icon. So that will get rid of all those. Now we want to scroll back up so we can see the top of this and we want to click the first item of walnut taffy here. That's the first item of our decor. And then we're going to count down two, three, four to the fourth item. Hold down the shift key again and click to select the top four items. 
we're going to come over once again to our cut icon and delete those. The very next thing we need to do is we need to bring back our properties box. And we're going to do that with this icon right here, which is our properties box. We actually could have turned it off this way too. This is a toggle to turn it on and off. So if we click it, it'll bring it back. And what we need to do now is we need to uh, select everything. So we're going to click on the top item of this decor to select it all. And we're going to come up to our properties box, come to our transform, and we're going to transform this to two inches wide. Before we do that, we want to make sure that we are in inches mode and that maintain aspect ratio is checked. So we're going to put in a two here and we're going to go ahead and click apply and that's going to resize our design for us. Now what we need to do is we need to zoom in so we can work on this. So we're going to come and grab our magnifying glass tool and we are going to zoom in right around it. So do that by clicking and dragging a marquee around the decor. Then we're going to come up to our ungroup icon because we need to ungroup this. So we're going to go ahead and click ungroup and then what we need to do is come back and click our regular select icon and then click anywhere on the screen to deselect our pattern. What we're going to do now is we're going to select this center loop here and we're going to do that by dragging a marquee around it. Now this loop actually ends right here with this little run stitch so you got to make sure your marquee is outside here so you want to come over a little bit wider than you would think and drag a box around so that you've got that selected. I may be too wide, let's see. Nope, that worked fine. So I've got the whole thing selected here and nothing else. So that is perfect. And what we need to do now is we need to uh, change the color of it. So we are going to change it to a greenish color. To do that, I'm going to come here to my thread color search icon to find that color and I'm just going to type in the word green and I'm going to find the first one here green gold and we will we'll click find and see what comes up so we've got a variety of greens to choose from let me choose this one right here this is Floriani true green but you can choose any green you like it really doesn't matter and once we have done that we're going to go into our sequence view and we are going to click on the first green item which is this run stitch right here and we are going to then modify this run stitch by coming over here to our shape tool and clicking it and when you do that you can see that we have got our start point and our nodes of this run and what we're going to do is we're going to come in right here kind of opposite of our stop point and we are going to right click on the line actually we need to be a little bit to the right of it so what you can see right now is that my cursor has a little red dot next to it now that means that if I click now I will select the red stop point which is not what I want to do actually it's on the left half of the line I want to actually insert a new uh, split point in the right part of the line so what I need to do is come over just a little bit to where that disappears and what I want to do now is right click and select split line so you want it to kind of be right opposite that stop point and what we're going to do next is we are going to come over and click on the first item in our sequence view to select it which is the little remnant of the run stitch that we just created by splitting that line and we're going to delete it by coming up here to our cut icon and clicking that. Now the next thing we need to do is we need to modify this satin stitch and the reason we need to do that is if you can look in here you can see that we've got some gaps in here and the angles are a little weird. Now the reason this happened just so you know is that this decor was designed specifically to stitch out very very tiny so originally these stitches were hand drawn in to be the exact minimum width that would sew out good but when we made it big it it didn't translate very well to being big because of the way it was originally digitized so what we're going to do is we're actually going to go in and we are going to fix that 
And the way we're going to do that is we're going to come over to our sequence view, scroll down a little bit. I'm going to click on the second green item, which is this first satin path right here. And we're going to come back and click our shape tool. And what we want to do is we want to click on any point. So one of these inclination points here, we're going to right click on it and we're going to choose edit outlines and what that's going to do is it's going to get rid of all the extraneous points so we can move these outlines instead of moving the inclination lines which are our angle lines. Once we've done that we're going to move our points around and there's three points that we need to move. We need to move this one, this one, and lastly this one down here. So what we want to do is we want to click and drag this one up to right about there right where this line of stitches is here. We want to move this one downwards and out just a little bit to match the inner part of that. And this one, this last point, we want to drag it down and in just a little bit so that it lines up at the bottom with this point. So I'm going to click and drag it in just a hair and come right down there and let off. And that looks pretty good. So once we have done that, we need to click on these nodes because what we want to do is we want to modify the curve a little bit. You see this comes up and it kind of has a sharp angle into here. So what you want to do is click on this top left one here and when that happens you'll see we get these other little curve handles that are out here that are connected by a little dotted line here. If we click on this and we drag it we can adjust the curve and I'm just going to adjust it out just a little tiny bit so that it's just a little uh, more matching of the curve of this loop and if you want to you can uh, do this with any other points that you need to. I think this looks pretty good here. Actually this one's coming in just a little bit so I'm just going to click on this one and I can see its little node right there. It's a little hard to see but I'm going to drag it out just a little bit and I think that that looks pretty good. So to lock this in I'm going to come back up here and click on the select tool. I also could have clicked the uh, right clicked on it and that would have locked it in. Uh, but we want to uh, modify something else here now because these angles of these stitches uh, don't look so hot in here. So what we're going to do is we're going to come back and click our shape tool one more time. And this is the angle that we really are worried about right here. And this is our angle line or inclination line. I'm going to just grab this black dot here this end of the line and I'm going to drag it down to where it's um, kind of parallel to this one down here and when I've got that one done I am going to uh, click on the screen to lock that in and deselect it and that looks a whole heck of a lot better there right now and what we're going to do now is we are going to create a guideline and that's going to mark the center and what we want to do is come over to our right ruler and click on the right ruler and drag and that's going to drag in a guideline and what we want to do is we want to set that guideline kind of right there in the center all right so it's right bisecting the center of our loop and that's going to allow us to line this next piece up and this piece up or actually this piece right here, it's going to allow us to line it up. So what we're going to do is we are going to come over to our sequence view to select that piece. We're going to click on the third item and we are going to come back and click our shape tool. And once again, we want to right click on any of the inclination lines and select edit outlines so we can see the outlines. And what we want to do is we want to drag this one onto the line so we are going to drag it over onto the line and up just a tiny bit. And I'm going to drag this one over so it's also on the line. And I'm going to drag this one over here down just a hair. And once I have done that, I am going to click on my select tool one more time to lock those changes in. And what we need to do now is click on our shape tool and we're now going to look at the inclination line. So if you want to adjust these, you can. I want to move this one over just a tad, and I probably didn't even really need to do that, um, but I'm going to go ahead and leave it in, and then I am going to 
come over to my sequence view and we are going to click on the fourth item in the sequence view. And when I do that, it's automatically going to lock those changes in and I've selected this part over here. What I need to do now is I need to select the other half of the right half of the loop by coming over to my sequence view, holding down control and clicking on the fifth item down. And once I have done that, I need to delete them and I'm going to do that by coming up here to my cut icon and clicking it to delete them. Now what I want to do is click on the second green item. I'm going to hold down my control key and click on the third or last green item here to select them. And I'm going to make a copy of both of those by coming up here to my copy icon and clicking copy and then paste. And once I've done that, I'm going to come to my flip tool right here, my flip horizontal tool and click it. And then using the guidelines, I am going to drag this over and line it up. So I'm going to line up my top lines with the pattern and that guideline and my bottom should line up pretty good all by itself. So I'm going to now let off the mouse and you can see that I've created the second half of the loop. That's a perfect mirror image of the first. Now because we've done this trick, we need to actually come in here and change how the second half stitches because we want to kind of stitch in the opposite direction. So what we need to do is we need to come to our sequence view here and we need to click this and drag it up so that it's below this item right here. So what we want to do is we want to come up and we want to click and drag it all the way up to here. So we are going to just get right on to this little fan right here and click it and it's going to drop that right in for us. Now one thing we want to do here is since we did that, what's happened is that this has become a separate item from this one. So we actually need to combine them. So there's actually a stop in here. And we're going to use a shortcut to do that. I'm going to click on this top item right here. So I'm going to hold down control and click on it so that we've selected all of the green items here. So I've got all items selected, even though these aren't highlighted because I've clicked on the top one, they are all selected. Now to turn this all into one color without a stop, because they're all the same color, but again, there's a stop right in here after this one. I'm going to come and reassign them to this true green, and I'm going to do that by just simply clicking on it. And since I've done that, now they are all one item without any stop in between. So what we need to do now is we need to hide our walnut taffy items. So we're going to do that by clicking the little eyeball on the first set right here. And we're going to come down and find the remaining ones and we are going to click on them. And that's going to hide all of our walnut taffy items so that they're not distracting. And we're going to correct the stitch out order right now. So what we're going to do is we are going to drag this one, this satin path right here, the last one in our view, up so it falls below this one. And the way that works in the software is if you click and drag it on top of something, it is going to fall right below it. So you can see now that the way this is going to stitch out is our underlay, the first half, the top left half, the top right half, and then the bottom right half. So that's going to stitch out in the perfect shape right now. But what we need to do is we need to change where the start and stop points of these two items are because they're kind of reversed from where they need to be. So to do that we're going to come over and we're going to click our shape tool and that's going to show us our start and stop points. And basically what we want to do is we want to start up here and we want to stop down here. So these two are going to get reversed. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to first drag my stop point out of the way just a little bit. Then I'm going to click and drag my start point up to the top here and then I'm going to drag my stop point down here so that it now starts stitching up here where this one will end, stitch down to here and end right here. Now what we need to do is we need to click on the last green item which is right here. We're again going to click on our shape tool 
and this one ended right here. This shape ended right here. So we want to start right there and we want to end down here at the bottom right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag my start point up to the top of this column right there and I'm going to drag my stop point all the way down to the bottom there. So what we need to do now is we need to make some copies of this loop so that it looks like the rest of the loops that we had there originally. And to do that, we are going to use a tool that we've never showed you before, and that's this ghost tool right here. And right now, if you'll remember, we have hidden our walnut taffy segments over here. When you click the ghost tool, what it does is it very lightly draws in our hidden segments. So they're not too distracting. We still can't click and select them because they're hidden, but we can actually see them a little bit. And I hope you can see this at home, but I've got some light gray lines here that show me where my walnut taffy is. And I'm going to use that as a guideline to line the rest of this up. So what we need to do now is we're going to zoom in to 400%. You can see I'm already pretty much there, but come down and click 400% to zoom in and what we're going to do is we are going to click our select tool right here and we are going to drag a marquee around this green item here to select it. So I'm going to start over here and click and drag around it and that will have selected it and what we want to do now is we need to make a copy of it. So I'm going to come up here and click copy and then paste and that creates a copy of it. And what I'm going to do now is I am going to drag this copy over to the left. So I'm going to hover over it to where I've got that little hand. And the easiest place to do that is in the center. And I want to drag it over here to the left. And as I do that, I want to make sure I leave enough space between these two so I can put another one in between because I'm going to put another one in here. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to click paste again, not copy and paste, but just click paste because we've already got a copy on the clipboard. It's going to put that copy right back where the first copy was. And you want to click and drag that in between the two. It's not necessary to get them perfectly lined up or perfectly spaced because we're going to be moving them around. What we're going to do is we're going to click copy one more time. We're not going to do anything with that copy. We're going to leave it right there and we're going to click, excuse me, I didn't mean click copy. I meant click paste one more time. We're going to leave it right there and we're going to click paste a, another time to make another copy and we're going to drag that one over to the right just a little bit. We're going to click paste one more time and we're going to drag that one over so we have a nice line of five. Now in the printed instructions, there's an easier way to do that should you have total quilter, but this is how you would do it in my decorative quilter. And you can do this, this method in total quilter as well. So what we're going to do now is we're going to tilt and resize our loops to get them in the right position. So we're going to come over here and we're going to click and drag a marquee around the first loop. And we're going to come over to our transform tab in our properties box. And what we want to do is we want to reduce the size of this to 75%. So we're going to come over to our width. We want to make sure that maintain aspect ratio is checked and that inches is still checked. Uh, we haven't changed it since the last time we double checked this. So unless you went away and restarted the program, it should still be okay. But just to make sure, maintain aspect ratio should be checked and inches should be checked. We want to reduce this to 75%. So go ahead and type in 75 and click apply. And we're going to also change the rotation. I should have done this all in one step, but it won't hurt to do it in two steps. So I'm going to click in 45 and click apply. And that's going to rotate our first loop. What we want to do now is we want to marquee our second one. So come up here, click and drag around the second one. And now I'll do it all together like I should have done the first time. This time what we're going to do is we're going to reduce it to 85% and we're going to rotate it 25 degrees. So I'm going to come in and type in 85. And then I'm going to come over here to my rotate and I'm going to click 25 and I'm going to click apply and that's going to rotate it for me. 
And what I want to do now is I want to drag this into position. So I'm going to come over and I'm going to hover over it where I have the hand icon and I'm going to use these light gray markings right here to drag this over the top of it. Now they don't line up perfectly but you just want to get in the ballpark here kind of right about there and let off and that's just about perfect right there. Um, we're going to now do the same with the smaller loop so I'm going to mark here around it and I'm going to drag it into position right about there. Okay so actually I need to come down just a little bit and this one uh, looks pretty good so I'm gonna go ahead and leave that one there actually it could come down just a hair and over just a hair so let me just adjust that oops I selected too much so when that happens just click the undo button the undo button is your friend and let's see if I can do that there we go now we got the whole thing I'm gonna come over and down just a hair okay so that looks good and what we need to do now is we need to do the same thing with the other side except we're going to go the opposite direction so we're going to marquee our fourth loop just like that we're going to come over to our transform tab once again we're going to come down to 85 percent but this time instead of doing 45 we're going to do 335 for the angle which is the opposite direction and click apply and while we're here we'll go ahead and drag this one into position we kind of want to use the gray lines as a guideline but also we want to try and match it up with this other loop here because uh, if it doesn't look symmetrical it won't look good and no one's going to see where those gray lines were anyway so I'm going to come down just a hair and maybe in just a bit okay so I'm just kind of visually matching the percentages and the heights here so that looks good and we're going to select our last loop and this time we are going to transform it to uh, 80 excuse me 75 percent and we're going to use an angle of 315 and click apply and we're going to again drag this one into position kind of right here matching up our other one let me come out just a little bit that's a little too close to the other guy there we go that looks pretty good so we've got a fan of loops made here and we are looking good so what we need to do now is we need to um, right click in our sequence view anywhere and we are going to select from the menu that comes up collapse all and that is going to collapse everything so we see the top levels of everything and the next thing we need to do is right click again in the sequence view and this time we're going to click show all so that's going to take our two walnut taffy items and it's going to uh, make them visible again so that we can modify them in fact what we're going to do is we're going to delete them so you want to click on the first one and then click on the third one while holding down control and we are going to come up to our cut icon and click it to delete them so what we need to do now is we need to zoom out so we're going to come and we're going to zoom to 200 percent using our numerics there and we are going to come and click the whole decor and what's happened again is that we've got this extra little piece up here which we're not going to worry about but what we're going to click is this last item right here and we are going to make a copy of it so we're going to click copy and then paste and what we want to do is we want to rotate this 90 degrees if you have my decorative quilter you'll have two 45 degree rotate icons we're going to rotate it right for 90 degrees which is two clicks of the 45 if you have total quilter you'll see two 90 degrees and you can just click once so I'm just going to do two 45s there's one and two and we're going to drag this one into position now it's going to look a little weird but don't worry about it uh, we are going to drag it into position and what you want is you want these guys right here to kind of line up a little bit okay so you want to get them just like that now don't worry about this gap in here uh, we are going to fix that we're going to hide that with a decor but that's about where you want it there 
All right, so just right there, you're going to try and get these two points to touch. Trust me, they won't. Okay, so you just want to have that gap. I'll move it out just a tear. Okay, that looks pretty good. So what we're going to do now is we're going to grab everything. So we're going to grab all of our green decors here. So we're going to do that by clicking on this item. And we are going to click copy and paste. And now we're going to rotate this 180 degrees. And we're going to do that with four clicks of the 45 or two clicks of the 90. So I'm going to go one, two, three, four. And that's going to rotate it into position. And now I'm going to click and drag it over here. Again, you want to uh, look at the edges of that uh, smaller loop to line it up. And that's what it's going to look like. That might be just a little bit too far. You want to kind of get a symmetrical shape in here. So let me just adjust that. Um, and that is looking pretty good. Okay. Um, so we have now got our decor all done. We are going to click on the whole thing in our sequence view here. So we're going to click it. And we need to center it in the rest of our stitches here. So to do that, we're going to come up to our Align tool. We're going to click it. We're going to come to the next to the last item, which is the Center to Rulers. And since our other stitches came in centered on the rulers, all we have to do is click this, and it will center it. And you can see that we've got an extra piece there. And what happened is I failed to delete that. So you should have deleted that along with the other walnut taffy items. I apologize. So go ahead and click it and come up and click the delete icon. All right, so that last little loop is gone now. And what we're going to do now is we are going to put in our last decor. And so what we're going to do is we're going to come and click our decor. And we are going to find decor number FQD dash DDE002. So I'm going to go ahead and click that. And I'm going to again center that. So I'm going to come here to my alignment tool and click center to bring it into the center. Now I need to bring it up a little bit in size to hide the edges of these inner fans. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over to my transform tab. And what I want to do is I want to change the width of it to 1.3. So I'm going to backspace over the last two and change it to 1.3 and click apply. And that is going to make it bigger so that it hides the edges. Now, if it doesn't do that, you might want to size it a little bit differently. It will depend on where you place these. But mine came out just about right. So all we need to do now is we need to create an outline going around this whole design. So to do that, what I'm going to come up here and I'm going to click on the top level higher of my decor. And what I'm going to do is come to my Create Outlines tool and I'm going to click it. And I want to set my ripples at 1. My spacing wants to be at 0 0.025. And I want to make sure that Cascade is checked. And I'm going to say make sure Remove Selection is not checked. And we want to click OK, and that is going to put in an outline, of, came in in light blue as you see there, uh, all around the outside. Now that comes in as artwork, so we're going to scroll down to our very last item in our sequence view and click it, and we actually want this to stitch out. Artwork doesn't stitch out, so what we're going to do is come and we are going to turn it into a run stitch with our one click. So I'm going to come and click it. And that's going to make it a run stitch. But we want to make this a little bit bolder. So what we're going to do is we are going to change it from a single run into a bean stitch. We'll leave our bean repeats at three. But we want a little tighter stitch. So let's come and change our repeats. Or not our repeats, but our stitch length to 2.5. And we're going to go ahead and click Apply. And that finishes this block. So all we need to do now is save it. You want to make sure you do not click the Save icon. If you click the Save icon, you will overwrite the basic block, and we don't want to do that. So what you want to do is come up to File and click Save As. 
And then you want to navigate to your August 2016 folder. So I'm going to go up a level and up a level, and I'm going to come and find my August folder and double click it. I'm going to find my August 2016 folder, double click it, and I need to give it a new name. So I'm going to call it Embroidery Block 10 of 12, and I'm going to save it in the WAF format in case I need to go back and edit it. So I'm going to click Save, and then what you need to do is you need to save this block in your machine format so you can actually stitch it out. And again, what you want to do is come and click File, Save As, and it'll give it the same name, so that's okay. But what we want to do is we want to change the format to whatever machine you have. So if I have a baby lock or a brother, I'm going to select version 9, for example, of PES, click Save, and that will save my stitch file. All I need to do now is put that on a stick and take it over to my machine. So that ends the software portion of this lesson, and we're going to move on and look at the construction details. So let's move on to the construction details for this month's block, and we're going to start by taking a look at the materials list. For this month's block, you're going to need Floriani Quilted Soft Bamboo Cotton Blend Batting or Floriani Embroidery Batting. You're going to need some Floriani Nylon No-Show Mesh Stabilizer, Embroidery and Bobbin Thread, and you want to choose colors that work well with your fabric choices, some R&K Embroidery Perfection Tape, that's the pink tape, and you'll need a minimum 6 inch by 6 inch or 150 millimeter by 150 millimeter hoop size. For the fabric details, you're going to need four five and a half inch squares of the batting. Fabric A is going to be four four and three eighths inch squares for the centerpiece. Fabric B will be four four inch squares cut in half diagonally for the corners. That'll leave you with a total of eight triangles. And the same for fabric C, just in a different color. These quantities make four blocks, but for the complete project fabric list, you want to see the info guide that was included in the November 2015 project download. Before we get started, some important notes. Some of the color changes in this design are there simply to make the machine stop between steps. You can leave the same thread in or you can change it as desired, but if you have a multi-needle machine, you need to use your machine controls to insert the reserve stop commands to make the machine stop between the colors, otherwise it's just going to continue on and stitch the next color and you need it to stop so you can switch out fabrics. So to start embroidering, let's go ahead and load the embroidery block 10 of 12 design into your machine. Hoop up a piece of Floriani nylon no-show mesh, get it good and tight. Attach the hoop to the machine and stitch out the first color, which will be the placement line for your batting. Go ahead and place the square of batting within the placement lines and secure the corners with embroidery perfection tape. Then stitch out the next color, which will become the placement lines for our fabrics. Next, you want to center fabric A within those lines right side up. Place your fabric B triangles along the placement lines right sides down on the center of the fabric and stitch out the next two colors to tack down the triangles. Next you want to press open those two corner triangles. Then place your fabric C triangles along the placement lines right sides down on the center of the fabric. And then you want to stitch the next two colors to tack down those triangles. Press open those two triangles, then remove all the tape, and change the top thread to the color that you intend for your quilting stitches if necessary. Next you want to go ahead and stitch out those quilting stitches, and then go ahead and stitch the next color for the guidelines. Now we're going to stitch out the next five colors to stitch the embroidery and the outline, changing the top thread for each color. Then you want to trim this block to six inches square, and you want to repeat the whole procedure to make a total of four blocks. So that completes this month's block. We want to thank you for watching and attending. We hope you'll use the video along with the printed PDF instructions to recreate this project at home. We hope you'll come back next month for the next installment of the series. And don't forget to post your blocks on the Floriani Embroidery Facebook page because at the end of the series, we are going to have a contest for the best looking blocks and the best looking overall quilts. 
So see you next time.